This episode is brought to you by Carvana. Carvana is in the business of driving you happy and saving you some time. That's why they give you the option to choose from thousands of cars online from wherever you are. That could be on your couch, on your break, or while your camera off during a meeting. Their 100% online car buying experience offers you as soon as next day delivery or pickup from one of their car vending machines. So visit Carvana.com or download the app to shop for a vehicle. Carvana, they'll drive you happy. Coming up. Members of the U.S. Task Force basically rammed the vehicle and pushed it into a ditch. And we later found out, had they not done that, the fugitive was going to engage in a shootout with law enforcement. For Vault Studios, I'm Will Johnson. You're listening to The Daily Crime. It's a case that has made national headlines. An escaped inmate on the run with an Alabama correctional officer. Now that inmate, Casey White, is back in Alabama after a car chase in Evansville, Indiana. Authorities believe Vicki White shot herself in the head following that chase and died from those injuries. Evansville police just released this body cam video showing the moments that Casey White was pulled out of a wrecked car and taken into custody. Vicki White was also pulled out of that car and taken to the hospital where she died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Now, the pair had been on the run for days after disappearing from a prison in Alabama. Now, we know that Casey White was an inmate and Vicki was a corrections officer. Casey told police the couple was prepared for a shootout with police, even if it meant losing their lives. Investigators believe they were in Evansville for about a week before their capture. Casey quickly surrendered, and his immediate words to our team was, is please help my wife. Uh, she just shot herself in the head. U.S. Marshals say there is no evidence Casey and Vicki White were ever married, but their capture brings a stunning end to a manhunt that captivated the country for nearly two weeks. Law enforcement collided with their third getaway car, a gray Cadillac in Evansville, Indiana. There are several tragedies, you know, to this story, the way this escape ended, but also to it's things that somebody entrusted with what she was given uh, as a correctional officer, planned, organized, and facilitated uh, this escape. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, one in every five children killed in traffic crashes in the U.S. was a pedestrian. That's why 3M is working alongside local governments and NGOs to help improve crosswalk visibility and traffic markings in school zones in a worldwide initiative to provide kids with a safe walk to school and access to the education they deserve. To learn more and take action, visit 3M.com slash school zone safety. 3M Science. Applied to life. There is so much that we are still learning about this case, the nature of the relationship between Casey and Vicki White, the capture and final minutes of her life, and of course, their days on the run. Here is what we know so far about that timeline. On Friday, April 29th, Vicki White escorted Casey White out of the prison where he was. The patrol car they were in was found at a nearby shopping center parking lot. That's where they got in another vehicle that same day of the escape and took off. By Monday, May 2nd, they were still on the run, and an arrest warrant was issued for Vicki White for allegedly allowing an escape in the first degree. We later learned that week that Vicki White had been fired by the sheriff's office as well. The couple was spotted in Tennessee driving a, a Ford vehicle, and then they were spotted in Evansville, Indiana, on Sunday, May 8th, in a pickup truck. Here's Vanderburg County Sheriff David Wedding. A vehicle had been located in Evansville almost a week ago that appeared to be related to the uh, Alabama escapee and sheriff's office employee. As we were working on this today, uh, we gained information that a vehicle matching the description of a suspect vehicle was near our sheriff's office. The U.S. Marshals Task Force and deputy sheriffs went to the area. Uh, soon thereafter, the male and female fled in a vehicle on Highway 41 northbound Went past Highway 57, as you can see, they turned here on Birch Park Drive. They came through this grassy area. Uh, the the Marshals Task Force officers intercepted them, actually collided with them to try to end the pursuit. Uh, when this occurred, the female driver of the vehicle shot herself, and the passenger was injured, uh, not too seriously. 
Casey White was arrested on the scene and Vicki White was taken to an area hospital where she later died. They were found with multiple weapons and about $29,000 cash. Vanderburg County Sheriff's Office shared with us these weapons found in the Cadillac that Casey White and Vicki White led law enforcement on a chase before the crash. Authorities say there were at least four handguns, semi-automatic, nine millimeters, and an AR-15. Authorities say Casey White was planning a shootout with law enforcement. Thankfully, no one was hurt. But the incident has left law enforcement in Lauderdale County in shock since it involved one of their own. Well, you know, you, it's, it's taking its toll, but when we have good people in law enforcement here in our area, so, you know, you get over the initial shock of what's happened, to the disbelief and then the, the uh, anger and all those emotions, um, but now, you know, profound sadness that, that Vicki Watt is dead. For those like him who have been there for a while? Well, you know... I knew her professionally, and and I thought I knew her really well. So I mean, it's like it's like losing a member of the family, really. So just profound sadness to have. We also asked if they plan to make any changes to policies or procedures after this escape. They had policies and procedures in place, and had they been followed, we wouldn't be here today. I mean, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a lack of a, a procedure. It was somebody who who exploited the procedure. That's District Attorney Chris Connolly in Lauderdale County, Alabama, talking to Fox 54 reporter Kenesha Dees about the case and about Vicki White. I'm joined by Kenesha Dees, weekend anchor and reporter at Fox 54 News in Huntsville, Alabama. Kenesha, first of all, let's talk a little bit about Casey White. Tell us, tell us about him. Casey Cole White, he actually was charged with capital murder in September of 2020 in connection to the murder of Connie Ridgway, which that case uh, was brought to light in 2015. Uh, He, believe it or not, Will, was already serving a about 75-year sentence for a 2015 crime spree that involved a home invasion, carjacking, and a police chase. So he pretty much had a long rap sheet. And That year, he confessed to the murder of uh, Miss Connie Ridgway and was awaiting a trial at the Lauderdale County Jail. Over a period of months or even years, it appears that this corrections officer and Casey White had developed some sort of relationship. Is that right? Right. So according to Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton, he says they had about a two year relationship, a quote, special relationship that had gone on. And from what I understand from the sheriff, it was mostly done by phone. Initial reports came out that she actually saw him in person, but the sheriff later clarified that the relationship they had was via via phone. The the, the news I've heard about Vicki White is that she was actually, her career was winding down. She's retiring. She had sold her house. Is that right? So authorities have confirmed, the sheriff has confirmed that she sold her home about a couple weeks before the actual um, reported escape, uh, according to authorities. They said that she sold it. And we looked it up ourselves. Uh, she sold it under market value. And authorities also confirmed at some point that she did get about $90,000 cash uh, before the escape. So uh, it's, it's when you piece everything together and you look at what was done prior to April 29th, it kind of has you scratching your head and wondering, well, hmm, what can you make of this? But she, as far as we know, didn't know him before he was behind bars, right? As far as what I've heard from authorities... The only type of relationship that they had was in that two-year period that I'm not sure about the the relationship prior to, but I know what they've released as far as two years before what we're now seeing, um, both of them being missing. They did have a, a special relationship, they say, quote, special relationship. This episode is brought to you by Carvana. Carvana is in the business of driving you happy. And sometimes the car you bought might not fit your lifestyle. That's why Carvana offers a seven-day money-back guarantee, so you have a full week to see if your purchase is right for you. If not, Carvana's friendly customer advocates will pick up your car and give you your money back, or exchange it for another car. Visit Carvana.com or download the app and find out how they'll drive you happy. This episode is brought to you by Carvana. Carvana is in the business of driving you happy. And when you're shopping for a car, there's nothing sweeter than landing within your budget sweet spot. 
That's why shopping with Carvana makes it easy to browse through thousands of cars you can afford. Once your budget is set, that's what you get. And we won't surprise you with any bogus fees. Ah, oh, sweet. So visit Carvana.com or download the app to shop for a vehicle. Carvana, they'll drive you happy. I've seen some of the surveillance video of them walking into sort of a, a garage bay area where she's taking him to a, a scheduled meeting that apparently wasn't even, or a hearing that wasn't even happening. Can you tell us more about that and how he actually made his escape with her? Literally, it happens within less than two minutes, probably even within a minute around, I want to say it was 931 um, that morning on April 29th. You see her pull up to the Sally Port and she walks in at in between the time of her walking in, the, the door is already open. And before she walks in through another door, you see her radio someone. It looks like she, it appears to, to show that she's radio radioing someone, excuse me. And then she walks in that other door inside of the detention center. And next thing you know, she comes out within seconds. And Casey White is behind her. Which is interesting, you know, he's behind her. He is handcuffed and he is shackled, but he's still walking in behind her. She holds the door open for Mr. White and he follows behind her. She lets him in in the back right seat behind the the front passenger side, right behind the front passenger side on the right side of the vehicle of the uh, squad car. She lets him in. She comes back around and she gets in the driver's seat. And there's actually, I don't know if you were able to see this well, but there's surveillance video both inside and outside of the detention center, Sally Port. So you got both angles there. And once that's done, she drives off. And it's just, it just happened within seconds, within a minute or less than two minutes. It's so, it's so quick how it all unfolded. And Kanisha, there's actually video of Vicky before the getaway as well, right? There is a clip of her inside of a hotel. Authorities didn't confirm exactly which hotel, but they actually released this information on Saturday of her appearing to check out of a hotel. Now, based off of one, one of what one of the investigators said. He says, quote, this is the morning of April 29, 2022. It depicts Vicki White checking out of the hotel room. Following this, she reports to work and begins the process of aiding in the escape of Casey White. For Casey White, he is expected to face capital murder charges down in Alabama sometime next month. For Vicky's death, it poses a question we may never have the answer to. How does a suspected murderer with a criminal past convince a corrections director in good standing to help him escape? Back in Alabama, Lauderdale County Sheriff Rick Singleton made this promise about Casey White. He's not getting out of this jail again. I'll assure you that. Again, Casey White is now in custody in Alabama facing new charges in addition to the ones he was already facing. My thanks to Kanisha Dees at Fox 54 in Huntsville. Thanks for listening to The Daily Crime. Be sure to check out our weekly show, True Crime Chronicles, available wherever you listen to podcasts. For Vault Studios, I'm Will Johnson. <laughs>